Good morning. It's Monday morning. I'm Chris Vinyl Piper. It's been a while since I've done a Vinyl Finds video, so let's dive right in. Europeans have been coming to the U.S. and taking our great American psych records back with them to their home country. And I've made it a mission of mine to go there and bring them back, either personally go there or to do it through the mail. Here is one through the mail. The Druids of Stonehenge creation on uni this is a stereo copy in the shrink from 1968 these guys were from new york city they started in the mid 60s when the yardbirds and the stones were conquering america they lean more towards blues and rock more blues and rock and garage a little bit of psych but really more garage they're just more psych influences it's very rare it's a desirable this kind is being bent by the shrink they have a great version of baby blue Coming through. Druids of Stonehenge creation. Next, another 1968 album saved from Europe. This one is called The Art of Lovin'. I don't remember the title. It was a blind buy, but I know it was on mainstream records and I liked the cover, so I grabbed it. This is, it says DJ Copy, not for sale. It's got a female singer. It was on my want list, but I just, I don't remember putting it there. I don't remember the music, but pretty much anything on mainstream with a cover that I like, I'm going to grab. That's the label. Side two. I think they're from Boston. I don't really know. I'm looking forward to digging in. This one says, how to have a freak out party and also how to blow your mind. I know nothing about this record. This was a total blind buy. I got it from Record Safari based on the cover solely. On the audio file, on the audio fidelity label. And that is side two. Very interesting cover, very busy. Lots of stuff going on here. I don't know if it's called How to Blow Your Mind. Oh, wait. How to Blow Your Mind and Have a Freak Out Party. That's what it's called. How to Blow Your Mind and How to Have a Freak Out party that's probably there's some good wisdom in this album this is the latest 2024 reissue of the 13th floor elevators it's their first album the sticker says this album presents a facsimile mono edition of the original 1966 album 13th floor elevators half speed mastering I'm not really sure what that means. I'm assuming that means cut from digital. Probably this is a needle drop. I'm just, I'm not really sure. I bought two of these. The other day I went to Record Store News Jim's house and I brought my copy of this and the 1966 mono and we did a quick comparison and they sounded pretty similar. Jim even was kind of leaning towards this one. He said that this 
the setup wasn't correct. He was using a stereo cart and he had the wrong speakers and we did it really fast. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring a variety of pressings and we're going to really see how this sounds. But it's it's got a booklet in the back. It's the latest version, 2024. Jerry Cole, Psychedelic Guitars on Custom Records. There's nothing on the back. This is a cheap record I found locally. Jerry Cole was a, a guitar hero. He played with the Beach Boys, the Birds, and Phil Spector. This album is a mix of surf, psych, rock, and rockabilly. That's side one label. End of side one's got psychedelic ripple. The end of side two is psychedelic guitars. I think they're taking advantage of the psych of the 60s, or 1968. This next one is a complete blind buy. I bought it based off the cover alone, Catfish Hodge, Catfish Hodge Band, Eyewitness Blues. The cover has them playing on a, a news set from 1979, which I know nothing about him, but I worked in news in 1999 to 2001 at a television station here in Los Angeles, KBC, doing the live graphics. So you don't see many records with TV news sets and a old TV camera. So I thought I'd grab it. That's the label of side one. And the label of side two. I know it's blues, but I don't know what kind of blues. So, you know, I'll probably play this this weekend. Catfish Hodges Band, Eyewitness Blues. Not Eyewitness News, but Eyewitness Blues. Okay, a friend of mine, Mark Spiders from Seattle, Washington. He's recording a new album, and he's going to press some vinyl. So he's been purging some of his OGs to fund that. Mark was in the band Willard back in 1990 through 94 in Seattle, a grunge band. So the first up that he had sent me is Tad's second album, Eight Way Santa. This is the band cover of this. Tad was one of the first bands signed to Sub Pop Records in the late 80s. Nirvana would open up for Tad many times in 1989 and 1990. This album is their second album, and it came out in 1991, the same year Nirvana Nevermind broke. It's probably their most commercial and most accessible album, if you're going to dig into Tad. The title, Eight Way Santa, was named for a type of acid that was going around in Seattle back in the day. They got sued with this cover when it came out because of this photo. Whoever did the art for this went to Goodwill and found a photo and they put this on the cover. And apparently this was a couple who were dating back in the day and they eventually saw it and then they, they sued them. So all copies of this were removed from the stores, which really kind of hurt their sales, and prevented them from blowing up any further, unlike Nirvana. That's the label. And side two. They were also sued for the song Jack Pepsi. The, the CD single use the Pepsi logo, and then they had the Pepsi word here. So they were really screwed with this one. And I, years later, in 2016, when the reissue came out, and I, I just actually noticed this, and I knew they had a different photo, but also they changed the name of Jack Pepsi to just Jack. So this version I have is the black vinyl. I have the green version. And now all I need is the green and black transparent. And I am good with all the versions from 1991's Tad 8-Way Santana. The drummer, actually, what's his name? 
Steve Steve Weed signed this. He was also in the band Willard, which I'm about to talk to I'll talk about next. Mark, who sent me these records, was in the band Willard, and this came out in 1991. It's an EP put out by my friend Jerry on Green Joe Records. This is a rock, metal, sludgy, kind of like Tad. Tad was around a lot when they recorded this. In 91, I helped drive, I drove to LA with Jerry, and we picked up these pressings from Green Joe Records, from Rainbow Records. Willard, and we drove them back. The drummer in this band was also in the drummer of Tad. Somewhere, I'm in the credits here. I met Tad a few times in West Seattle when they were rehearsing with this and at the off-ramp. The, these guys were big time stoners if you can't tell by the photo. Another record that Mark had sent me is Green Apple Quick Step. This is their second album, Reloaded, on the Medicine, the Medicine label. Marianne Braden, the lead singer here, I went to high school with her as well. Mark and Marianne have been married for 30 years. This was a sealed record, and they obviously unsealed it a little bit so she could sign it. I'll end up opening it anyways and playing this. These guys were alternative post-grunge band. They were very popular in Seattle, playing the off-ramp and rock candy and all the places around 93 and 96. And they were always sold out. I think I need one more of their albums and I'm complete with them. Mark also sent me the 1994 version of the Cramps Flame Job, still sealed. It's also on the Medicine label, just like the Green Apple Quick Step. I don't really remember many of the songs from this. I know this is the red vinyl version, but I just, I don't really remember the Cramps. The last record Mark sent me. Husker Du, Flip Your Wig. This was 1985 on SST Records. This was the, the last album on SST Records. They produced it themselves. And I think they went to Warner Brothers after that. Comes with the, the, the lyrics in her sheet. At the time, I wasn't really into these guys, but lots of my friends were. I was more into Scorpions, I think, and Qu Quiet Riot in 1985. Husker Du, Flip Your Wig. In addition to these records, Mark sent me a box of his current single, Smoke It and See. This is his band, Smoke It and See. The songs are Rockstar and Room 909. Marianne is from his wife, Green Apple Quick Step. The guitar player, rhythm guitar, is Mark, and he was in Willard, went to high school with both these. And then Otis... No, Jeff Redding is the drummer. He was the drummer in Green Apple Quick Step. And Otis P. Otis, he was in Willard. And before that, the infamous Seattle band F Holes. Smoke and see. I believe the engineer of this record was Tad. And 
but I have a box of his singles. I don't know what to do with these. He wants me to go to a few record stores and hand them off, but that's not really what I do. And now looking at it, it says 2022. That's not his latest single. So I have a box of singles from 2022. Anyone want a single? Want to buy a single? Let me know. That is my record finds for Monday morning, August 26th. I've got a bunch of records over there that I need to organize, catalog, and I'm going to do another video talking about some of those new finds, some really good stuff. Please like and subscribe if you're into this thing, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you. A box. Freaking box, man. What am I going to do with a box?